pieces of it that came from our master page and pieces of it that came from the default ASPX page. All right. So, this came from the master page, right? This came from the master page. This came from the master page. This came from that default.aspx. So we specified that that content area should contain a calendar in that particular placeholder. So it popped that HTML or it popped those ASP.NET controls in that content placeholder in the master page. Now if we look at the source, what are we going to see? We're going to just see an HTML file, right? Which is what we'd expect, right? Because the client gets an HTML file. Now, the server side pieces together that HTML file. Some of the stuff it gets from the master page. Some of the stuff it gets from the specific page. But it pieces it all together to create an HTML file and then delivers the HTML file to the client. All right. So, if we go to the About page, again, we have the same thing. We have this stuff that came from the master page and this stuff that came from the specific about.aspx. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you can't view a master page directly. So if I try to pull up the master page, let me make sure I got the name right. It blows up. This type of page is not served. All right. A master page, again, is sort of a, a skeleton. It's a shell, a template for a web page. It's not a completed web page because it has those content placeholders that need to get filled in. So when you create a master page, you're creating the template. You then have to create pages that use that master page. Um, to really take advantage of, uh, to actually be able to serve uh, web pages to the client. Let's look at the About page. The About page is going to look the same. All we're going to see on there is two content tags. All right. The content tags correspond to the content placeholders in the master page. One for the header, one for the body by default. And we can go and put our content in here. Now if we go and view it, we could see that my content is there. All right. So now if I decide I want to change something in um, the master page, if I want to change something about the banner, And we'll see, again, we can't, not the best color choice, but it'll be that way on every page. All right, so the change got made to the about page and it got cha uh, changed to there because we changed code that was in the master page. So 
every page that inherits from that, that change gets propagated to. Questions about this? So notice how we've really modularized everything. Appearance, CSS. We have one CSS file for, for everything right now. Now we could, we could take it down different paths and have a couple CSS files depending on different things, slightly different for different pages or whatever. But we have our CSS code that is responsible for the appearance of this. We have a master file, a master page, that is responsible for the overall structure of the page. That it has a certain that every page that we use is going to have a certain banner. It's going to have a certain navigation. It's going to have a blank area where we can put our content in. Then each specific page then just has code um, that's specific to that page. So we fill in the two content placeholders. All right, and so we've we've made this as as reusable probably as possible. All right. Let's create a brand new page. Okay? Let's create a brand new page. So I'll go up to New, File. I'm going to create a web form. I'm going to now tick the Select Master Page checkbox there. All right? Because I don't want to create this, this page from, from scratch. I want this page to look like all the other pages on my site. So I'm going to say select master page. All right. I click add. I only have one master page, so that's the one I better check, right? You can have multiple master pages. All right. And more than that, you can nest master pages. Um, let me give you an example of, of why or, or how you might want to do it. All right. Think in terms of common content. All right. Let's say we were doing Elsie's website using ASP.NET. Every page has this on there, right? We go to any page on our site, it has that on there. Now, every page within current students has the sign navigation here. Every page within business and industry has a different side navigation there. All right? So we could build a master page to have the stuff that every page has in common. That is this stuff up here. We could then build a second master page that was based off the first master page and added this stuff. And we could create one for students, one for future students, one for business. We, we could create one for uh, one master page for each section on our site. Because there's some things that are on every single page on our site. There's some things that are on every single page of our site within a section. And that varies from section to section. So we could create a site master page. We could create a section master page. And the section master page, by the way, still needs the stuff that's on the main master page, so it inherits from that. And then each page could inherit then from its appropriate section master page. So we'll probably get into an example of that. I'm not sure if we will today or not. But again, you can nest those uh, content areas. And you can specify um, one master page that inherits from another. Again, and think in terms of common contact and, and maybe certain kinds of pages, you know, all your pages have some things in common, groups of your pages have some secondary characteristics in common, and you can put those in there. All right. At any rate, right now, I, I don't have that problem, right? I only have the one master page, so I'll select it, and I'll click OK. And it creates that new page. It actually created it in the styles folder, which I did not want it to do. So let me delete that and try this again. 
I had selected the styles folder and wasn't paying attention. So let's go and let's create that again. Files, new, file, web form, select master page. Let's give it a name. Um, we'll call this our links page. All right. Then I click add. I pick the master file, in this case, Site Master. And again, I then have my links page. And if you notice, it has those same two content placeholders, which again, it gets from the master page. When it created that page, it looked at the master page and said, hey, how many content placeholders do you have? I have two. One that has an ID of head content, one that has an ID of main content. It then will create for me, when it creates the page, two content tags that are associated with the head content and the main content of, um, of the master page. So, I can go and add a list of things or whatever and be on our way. Yes? It seemed like, I think when it was the default AS file, there was mm -hmm. more, there was more stuff in it when you first created it. Yeah, because it puts some things in there for by default. So in other words, when I first, when I said to create a non-empty website, it gave me a default page that had a bunch of stuff in it. All right, a bunch of default stuff. Some just de default headings, default text, and all that. Now I got rid of that and replaced it with a calendar. Now when I create a new page, it doesn't give me any default stuff in the new page other than the two content tags. Okay. Right. And that's the only place you can put stuff? That's the only place you can put stuff. Okay. That's the only, yeah, that's the only place you can put stuff, correct. So I don't know. We'll put in here. Imagine... There are, there is a list of links. All right. Now, if we go and run this, we'll notice that this page is going to have everything in common that the other ones did, but oh, it's not on the navigation. All right. Well. Remember that navigation was in the master page, so we can fix that pretty easily. All right. So we can go and go back to the master page. And we can go in and I suppose we can put it anywhere we like. Create our and now when we go and run it, we'll have all of those pages on our navigation. Yes? What were those tildes there? Ah, that's a great question. What does a tilde mean? What does a tilde mean? Do, do we know what a tilde is? Pardon me? Squiggle. A little squiggle. Um, I, th I thought someone was going to say, Til didn't Tilda play the Borg Queen in that one Star Trek? And indeed she did. Tilda Swenson played that. Uh, yeah. Spelled a little differently, though. It's spelled with an A in her name. It's spelled with an E uh, in this. So the tilde is this little squiggly line here. Whoops. What does that represent? All right. And this is this is sort of consistent in in, a, in in several different areas. The tilde represents the application's home directory. All right. 
the application's home directory. So it's saying that this file, the files that it's creating links to, are found in the application's home directory. Okay? In this case, it really doesn't do anything. All right? Because if I get rid of this, since everything's in the application's home directory, it's going to find everything in the same place, right? It's going to it's going to always look in the current directory, which is the application's home directory, so it will find things. So in this particular case, that really doesn't add anything to, to what I'm trying to accomplish here. However, um, if we had a bunch of files that were, if we had a bunch of pages, rather, that were spread out over multiple directories, then the tilde slash would, would make our life a little easier. So then I could have some files in one directory, some files in another. But anyhow, yeah, the tilde simply represents, whenever you see the tilde, it simply represents the application's home directory. And by that, again, what do I mean? I mean the, 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 the directory that has the web.config file. It's probably the easiest way to identify that. So, Part of your, I hesitate to say struggle, but, but part of your, your challenge is to know where to make changes if you want to change something on the site. All right, there's a few no-brainers. All right, um, if you want to change the way the site looks, for the most part, CSS. All right, we'll talk a little bit later on at some point, probably not today, but we'll, we'll talk about themes because that's another potential place where you could put some changes relating to appearance. All right? But for where we're at right now, you want to change the way it looks, put it in the CSS file. You want to change code that's common to every page, change the master file. You want to change code specific to one page, you'll put it in that specific page. Unless you want to put it somewhere else on the master page, in which case then you'll need to make a content placeholder and then you can put some code uh, in there. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Let's say I wanted to have on every page something up here that said the name of the page. I don't know. There's something goofy. Let's see how we could do that. All right. Right now, we can only put code in two places in the master page. That content area, which is right here, all right, the main content area that's right there, and the header content area that we can't see because this, this is a picture of the body of the page. So we can't see the head section. If we want to put it here, though, all right. That's not in the main content area. The main content area is down here, and it's definitely not in the, the, the head content area either. So we're going to have to make a new content area to put that code there. So let me go to our master page, and I will put give it a different name, right? So I'll call it content, I'll call it side 
banner placeholder. Alright. Let's put some CSS on this guy so that we can see what it looks like. I'm just going to give it some size so we can see it. Give it some obnoxious color so we can easily see it. Alright, that's there. That's not where I want it. So let's I'll move its position in the here. I want it above the menu. So I actually want it kind of like over here. Alright, that's kind of where I want it, except I want to push it over to the edge. So let's try slapping a float right on here. So that's kind of where I want it. All right. Now I can get rid of the ugliness. All right. I can get rid of the, the goofy style rule that, that does that because it served its purpose. So I can go and let's make, we'll keep the float right. We'll make a background of white and a color of black. Keep it simple. All right. like that for some reason. All right. Let's go to we define that. Now let's go and add some content there. And I called it uh, side banner placeholder. So I can go then into the default page and Call this side content. I did not want to do that, but I copied the ID. Let's go back and try that again. Sign message. I think it's getting the style rule from header P instead of side banner. Which seems odd to me, but what do I know?
any rate, there we go. Now, will these pages break because I haven't defined anything for that content area? Nope. Those pages are fine. I haven't displayed any content in there, so no harm. So that didn't automatically go and add a content placeholder to each of the pages? No, because I did it after the fact. So in other words, if I go in here about, oops, if I go into about.aspx, notice that I have the, I still have the two original content tags. All right. It didn't go and add the third one in. All right. Because at the, at the moment it created it, there were only two. So it gave me those two. All right. Then I went in after the fact and added a content placeholder. It doesn't go and give me that content placeholder, or it doesn't give me that content tag for that. I have to manually go and add it in. All right, so just a sequencing thing. Were I to create a brand new page, new file, web form, and we'll call it. Contact us. Select master page, this. Now notice it gave me the three different content placeholders. Because at the time I created this one, it had those, those three. So it created it with those three. Questions about this? All right, let's say we create one from scratch then. Let's, let's go and go through the process of, of creating this from scratch. Because what we did here is we, we created a non-empty site, and it already gave us a master page. It already gave us the uh, a couple of pages that clone from it and, and, and so on. So let's go and let's create our own master page. I didn't want to do that. So let's go up here, File, New, Website. We are going to pick Empty Website this time. We're going to create it on the desktop and call it Empty Website. Now, again, we don't get all those freebies, all right? But we do get the web config file because you have to have a web config file. So I will go up here and say File, New, File, and then I can pick that I want to create a master page. And I can give it anything that, any name that I want to. And I'll call it Main Master, all right? Uh, at some point, I don't know if we'll finish it today or not, but I'm gonna, I want to create a master page that clones this master page so I can then clone some pages off of that. All right. Okay. So I click Add. And I'm given essentially what you get when you create a just a plain old ASPX page that doesn't inherit from a master page with one difference. Our master page has those two content placeholders in there. So again, when you create a master page, you get those two content placeholders for free, whether it generates them or whether you created it yourself. So now I can go and I can put in stuff. 